Okay, so I guess I'll just move sequentially through his notes. So the next example he has is this first order Lagrangian. Uh, it's called first order because it's first order in time derivatives. And that's kind of an issue. Well, it's an issue that the time derivatives don't appear in the same way that the spatial derivatives do, like they did in the Klein Gordon Lagrangian. So we're going to have to modify our, well, not modify our equation, but just write it out in a slightly different way to actually attack this problem. Uh, another issue is that he, you know, these dots, like psi dot and the gradient symbol, they don't really coincide with our notation. So I'll have to rewrite this to uh, make it completely clear what we're going to do. Uh, but so first off, just the Euler Lagrange equations. Um, I'm just going to expand this guy here. You know, I'm summing over mu. So I'm going to break it into the time part and the spatial part. So zero is the time part, and then i is still summing, and it just sums over the spatial parts. So one, two, and three. And this term is still here, hasn't changed. And so next, I want I want to rewrite this Lagrangian. So to do that, I just want to, you know, make sure we're all clear on some things. So in general, if I have a four vector, let's call it x mu, and it has components. You know, these are just four numbers. These are the components. Then the contravariant components will be the time component will be the same, but the spatial components I'll pick up a minus sign. So our derivative operators, when you have a lower i, that will mean partial x, partial y, partial z, or I really should be should write it as partial 1, partial 2, partial 3, whatever. And that's, you know, the gradient. But partial with the i up top, that's going to be minus partial x, partial y, partial z, or minus gradient. So using that, we can rewrite this. So uh, the dots just become d0 psi and d0 psi star. Uh, actually, I forgot to mention that. So this psi is a complex field. And what we do when we have complex fields is, oh, well, what we're doing here is we're going to treat psi and its complex conjugate as independent fields. So um, really, well, we should have two Euler Lagrange equations. Uh, but really, since psi. Uh, since the independent fields are complex conjugates of, of each other, all, all we'll have to do is find one equation of motion, and then we can just take the complex conjugate, and that will be the equation of motion for the other field. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, see, so yeah, I just rewrote these dots as partial zero. And this gradient, so this gradient I just rewrote is partial i, this i is lower, and then I kind of absorb this minus i into this term, and that becomes partial i with the i raised, and so now we get plus, and this term is still the same. And so now that it's written out in a more useful form, we can just apply, we can just find these terms. So just worrying about the time term first, uh, partial with respect to d0 psi star, so that will be just this term. And clearly, I have this i over 2 out here, and there's a psi right here, so it's very easy to see that this is just this, um, minus i over 2 psi. And uh, you know, this thing right here, it's sort of like what we did with, uh, actually at first glance, it looks like we do the, the same thing with, as we did with the Klein-Gordon equation. It looks like a similar term, this term here. But it's easier because psi and psi star are independent. So uh, when I take the derivative 
of this term, uh, this di psi is a constant. So I can just pull it out. And again, I, so I've written in the equations of motion, I've written di, I've used i as a summing index here. But in the Lagrangian, I'm using i as a summing index. So when I take this derivative out, I don't want to use i, I want to use, I'll just use j. So when I take, uh, so when I do that, so again, this pulls out, it's a constant. So I just have derivative of this with respect to this. And that's, as we said before, um, when i is equal to j, it's, it'll be 1. When i is not equal to j, it's 0. So you get a chronic root delta here, uh, ji. And then I can just sum here, and this will become dj psi. And then finally, we need to do this term right here. And there are two terms that have a size star. So this term and this term, but they're, again, it's easy to do. Uh, we'll just get the i over 2 and this d0 psi. And then from this term, we'll just pick up a minus m psi. And then we still need to do, so we have this, and we have this, and we have this, but we still need to do the time derivative or d0 of this and di of this. And that's uh, easy to do. And uh, I guess I just skip this, I skip that step here. So d0 of this will just be negative i over 2 d0 psi. And then we'll get a plus di, uh, well, I use j here. So it'll be dj of this. And so dj of this, so I just get dj, dj psi. Uh, and then minus this, and we work that out here. So minus i over 2 d0 psi, and then plus m psi, and all that equals 0. And then if I just move this term to the right, it becomes positive, and these are the same terms, so the 2 goes away. So I get an i d0 psi equals dj dj psi, plus m psi. And so he writing now, you know, in his notes, he the equation of motion he gets is this, which you can see, so yeah, d0 will be the time derivative, so that's consistent. And then this is like, uh, you know, dj is partial x, partial y, partial z, dotted with negative partial x, partial y, partial z. So, so it becomes negative Laplacian psi. And this term is the same. So everything's consistent with what he gets. Uh, I, I did have, <laughs> I, I had some confusion with some minus signs when I was working this out because of his notation. But once you write everything out in a consistent way, it, it, there's, no, there's no confusion anymore. So um, yeah, so that's that. Next I'll do, I think the next one is the electromag electromagnetic field Lagrangian thing, so I'll do that one next.